Hi, it's Brian here again, and uh, welcome to episode two of the Ask Brian T Show. So um, we have, as always, some really interesting questions for you today. And um, so let's get cracking. I'm, I'm here, I'm settled, I'm ready to take on these questions. Let's hear what they are. So the first question, please. I was hoping you could give me some advice on starting an acting career as a 19-year-old who has little to no past experience and without the support of my family, who see my dream as being stupid and unachievable, as from the outside, the industry seems difficult to break into and navigate. Aiden. Right, that's a really great question, Aiden. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit sad as well. I mean, somebody's basically telling you your dream is unachievable, or unrealistic. You know, that's that's never nice to hear, right? Um, this is what I'd say is, you know, nobody should be able to tell you that something you really want, a dream, a desire, becoming an actor, is unachievable. I mean, um, it's not. I mean, people do it all the time, right? So why shouldn't, shouldn't it be you? Um, so what I'd say is the first thing is, and this is an important step towards becoming a professional actor is, you know, you don't need to listen to everybody's opinions, right? Because not everybody is right. The only opinion that matters here is, is yours, because is if, if this is really what you want to do, then um, that's what you've got to focus on. Now, the next step to, to this and the next part of your question is how do you do it? You know, how do you rise above this negative um, sort of view of what you're about to do and actually get on with doing it? Which is important, by the way, because that alone will start to silence people. Um, often people test you actually with this sort of thing. You know, they kind of, you know, when people go on diets, people will sometimes say, look, uh, oh, would you like a, just a one piece of chocolate? And that person goes, yeah, okay, maybe I'll just have one. They're kind of testing that person's desire to actually follow through in a way because, you know, if that person can do it, then they could do it. So often, you know, when people say this to, you know, somebody, you know, that, you know, well, you sure you want to be an actor? It's really difficult. It's unrealistic. If you go out and do it, what does that really say about them? You know, they could have done it or they could have followed a similar passion. So um, that's something to bear in mind. But yeah, you're 19 years old, right? You're the star of this whole process. And um, sometimes I get questions and people saying, you know, I'm 19 years old, I've left it too late, you know? Um, which is kind of funny, right? Because let me tell you something. Really, your acting journey, I would say, kind of begins in your 20s. Um, often it's not for everybody. I know there's people that do start earlier, but for a lot of actors, they have to have a little bit of life experience behind them as well to bring to the table, right? Um, so, you know, don't worry about your age. You know, that's fine. Just go, It doesn't matter what age you are, whether you're 19 or you're 55 or whatever. The best time to begin is now, you know, is just to start with it because you want to have as much time as you can actually doing the thing that you want to do. So here you are, you're 19 years old. What is the first step? Well, as always, you've got to learn the, the trade. You've got to learn the profession. So the first thing is get yourself into acting school, get some tuition, really start to understand um, the craft of acting. Um, after that, it's really about um, taking the steps and the stages of the profession. So, for example, once you come out of acting school, you've got to get an agent. And the first step of that is, is actually you need to approach the agents, get in front of them. Um, for example, producing a showreel will become quite important because it's a way of proving to the industry, casting directors and agents, that you can act. Um, and then um, moving on from there to casting directors and actually going up for auditions and securing roles. So at your stage right now, I'm talk, that's way down the line, right, Aiden? So right now you're talking about how do I progress from where I am, you know, from my living room or from my bedroom. I've got this idea I want to be an actor. So what I would say is, you know, look at and see what's in your local area. You know, maybe you join a drama group um, or an amateur dramatics group. You know, I, I started there. You know, I think nearly a lot of actors start there um, because it's a way of testing out whether you like the process of acting or not as well. So that's a good thing to do. Get some good tuition as well. And perhaps in your area, there's a, there's a local professional um, or maybe you have to come to London, you know, and come to an acting school like myself and you, you go and you train with them. Um, so I'd say that's the first steps. And remember, you know, don't listen to the negative feedback about whether you should or should not do this. It's up to you. It's your choice. So um, go ahead. And uh, I think that answers your question, doesn't it? So let's go to the next one. 
What question or topic would you recommend your student ask if they were given the opportunity to meet one of the most successful film directors? Tindy Lewis. Okay, this is a good question, Tindy. And uh, I know you, Tindy, right? So um, I know what you're talking about. You're out there in the industry. You're thinking about maybe you've got this opportunity coming up. I don't know. Um, will you have the chance to meet a big director? What do you say? You know, what is the thing that you'd like to say? And I know you're right. The thing you want to say is, oh, do you have any roles for me? You know, right? You want to say, do you have a part for me, right? Um, I would try and avoid that. Because really, initially, what you're trying to do is build rapport. You're trying to treat that person just as another human being, really, before you think of them as a director. So one of the things I would ask them is, what is your next project? Um, talk to them about them. You know, what is it they're doing? What are they interested in? And get that person talking to you. Because I think that once you start that process, you, can, you start to kind of get into a conversation, a flow, and, and from doing that, the person starts to like you as well. Because, yeah, of course, a director, producer, casting directors, agents, they get actors all the time coming up to them and going, oh, you know, here's my CV, or, you know, have you got a part from me? So avoid that sort of thing. Do the opposite. In fact, I've got a story about this. Um, there's an actress that I know um, in L.A., who was at a party and she got at that party, Quentin Tarantino was there. And she thought, well, I could start asking him about, you know, what potential roles have you got for me? She said, but I thought we could have a more interesting conversation. And she kind of started talking about politics because she knew a lot of, about politics and she had some views on it. And she chose to talk about that. And actually, he quite enjoyed that conversation because it was something different. And they got on really well. They really got on well and they started to have a little bit of chemistry. So from there, you know, fast track, um, years later, he did cast her in something. In fact, he cast her several times. But it all came from that initial conversation. So here's what I would say is the golden rule is don't feel that you, you need to, or in fact, you shouldn't jump into, do you have a part for me? Jump into... You know, what's your next project? Or maybe you know a little something about that director. Hopefully you've done your research on that director. So maybe you know they have an interest in something. I don't know. Maybe maybe they're really into football. Maybe they've got a really a favorite team. And you ask them about that and build some rapport, get them into conversation. And then naturally things will lead towards a conversation, um, you know, directly with the work. But don't jump in there. You're right. Take it easy. Ask some, you know, interesting other questions first. Okay, I think that answers your question, Tindy. Let's move on to the next question. Hi, Brian. I have an acting question for you. When an actor is doing a scene and they know how it plays out, how can they prevent themselves from knowing the end and produce an authentic and real reaction to what is being said? Carebear underscore 220. Okay, um, that's a really interesting question, Carebear, and I love your uh, Snapchat handle. That's a, that's a really cool one. Um, right, how do you make things look spontaneous and real when ultimately at the end of the day as an actor you have a script right um you're given a script you know the whole story you know exactly everything that happens to the character you know it scene by scene but how do you make it look spontaneous and real the illusion of first time as we would call it um because really when you think about it what we're trying to do as actors is make it look as if this is the first and last time that you're ever going to say any of these words you know because in real life you know, we don't go around with a script, do we? There's not a script for the day that you pick up and you think, right, okay, I've got to go. This is what I've got to say and this is how I'm going to say it. And No, you just it happens, right? It's organic, it's spontaneous. And that's what we've got to make it look like within acting. Um, but you're right, the big challenge is that you've got to overcome all the whole idea that you know what's happening. So um, within method acting, there's a few techniques that we use to try and overcome this. One of the things is that you start to think about something that is different and not connected with the scene or the events that you're portraying. We call this um, sense memory work. And often it could be, I mean, there's a whole range of different sense memories that we could use within the method. And let me briefly explain what sense memory is. Is when you think of an experience from your, from your own life and you relive it through the senses. So what did you see, smell, taste, touch, hear? Um, when you experience that event for the first time. Now, 
It doesn't, it could be something as simple as the, the drink that you have first thing in the morning or something as complicated as the time that you split up with somebody in a, in a relationship, right? The key is that you're actually beginning to think about something else because we have to occupy um, a certain part of the brain so that it relaxes and isn't caught up with trying to say the script of trying to regurgitate the script. Um, what we're trying to do is get you involved organically and living through it. And that means not always thinking about the script. You know, in fact, it's, the script should just come out. Um, what we're really trying to get is the behavior of the character and to, for that to happen as organically as possible. So the, the number one thing I would learn to overcome this particular um, issue that you've got, Care Bear, is that um, you, you sense memory because by thinking about something else, your mind is taken away off of the end result and it starts to focus more on what's happening right now in front of you. Okay, so I think that answers your question and brings us to the end of the second show. So keep your questions coming though because um, we've still got a lot more to get through and we want the questions to keep coming. So this is what you should do if you want to send me a question. You can uh, go to our Facebook page and uh, you can um, post a question there. You can send one on Twitter to Brian C. Timoney. You send us a question there. Why don't you Snapchat me? You know, I'm big on Snapchat. You can go to uh, Brian Timoney 10 and send me a question that way. Or the best of the best is basically to send in a video uh, by email. So you can email me directly and send in a video. And uh, we'll show that on the show. And um, yeah, I'll answer your questions. Great. So brings us to the end of the second show. See you on the next one.